everybody, my name is Colleen Evans. I am Director of Dental Sciences at the Staten Island Museum, and today I'm in the collections again uh, to share with you some of my favorite things, which are aquatic insects. Uh, so everything I pulled out today was collected on Staten Island and can still be found here. So things to watch for. Uh, so first of all, I'm going kind of backwards in that I'm going to start with things that people are most familiar with and then work my way to things that are probably going to be a little less familiar for people. So I'm starting with the dragonfly. Uh, so this one's a blue dasher. That's one of our more common species of dragonfly you can find. Uh, so dragonflies, their adult stage is terrestrial. So you're probably familiar with them kind of zooming around freshwater um, in the area. But their nymph or naiad stage, so their juvenile stage, is fully aquatic. So they are usually found in the water. And much like their adult form, they are predatory. So dragonflies are predators. In case you didn't know that and then so is their juvenile stage and their juvenile stage is spectacular they have what's called a prehensile jaw and so instead of having like little mandibles like the adult stage does they have kind of a structure where their mandibles are fused and they have kind of almost like an elbow so it's just kind of like I'm holding my arm right now tucked up underneath the rest of their the rest of their head and whenever prey goes by they shoot it out and then grab it and eat it. And dragonfly nymphs can be quite large. We're talking maybe an inch or two for some of them. And so they can eat anything from teeny little like midge larvae that are usually found in the water column also, but also really large things so like even like small fish. Uh, so those are one thing that I was going to share. The water strider. So this should be somebody who's pretty familiar for most of you guys. Water striders are found on the surface of the water. They have these really long spindly legs, which allow them to stay suspended on top of the water, just using water tension. Um, but moving into some of Colleen's favorite things, we have the gyrinid beetle. So gyrinid beetles or whirligig beetles are also found on top of the water column, so much like the water strider is. They're suspended on top of the surface of the water using surface tension. Uh, these guys are particularly cool because they have eyes on both on top of their head and underneath so that whenever they're floating on top of the water they can see both what's above them in the water but also what's below them actually inside of the water so they can see what's above the water and what's below. Um, you can see on this guy he's got his little legs tucked up and so the reason they're called whirligig beetles is because they actually spin on top of the water like a little whirly gig. So they spin all over the surface and if you catch them and you shake them around really hard uh, they'll release some of their um, they'll release these secretions that smell like green apples which is kind of bizarre. Um, it's a defense secretion so it's you know you're stressing them out because you're shaking them uh, but it's pretty cool. Let's see and then I've also got this wee little guy here so he's called a toad bug. So toad bugs live on the edges of the water. So usually like on like sandy edges of water. Um, they are called a toad bug because they do superficially resemble a frog or a toad in that they have their little eyes up on top of their heads, much like a frog or a toad does. Um, and they do kind of hop a little bit too, which is kind of cool. Um, they just look particularly strange because they very much do look like a teeny tiny little frog. Um, but they're just a little bug. Uh, but my absolute favorite guy that I love talking about is the giant water beetle, or toe biter. Um, so this guy is gigantic. Um, there's a reason why they're called a giant water bug. Um, this one in particular actually was collected here in St. George. That's where I am right now, in Staten Island, up by the ferry. Um, so I don't know exactly where it just says St. George. And actually, he was probably collected at a light trap would be my guess. Um, these guys actually are very attracted to light. So even though they are aquatic, so they do live in the water, they swim around, um, they will be very attracted to lights. Um, they do fly, they go out of the water, usually for dispersal reasons, so to get to a different pond. Um, that's good for like genetics and stuff, so that you're not just reproducing with the same couple of individuals over and over. Uh, but these guys are also predators. So you can see they have these big huge eyes up at the front of their heads, these big giant bulbous eyes. He's got those front legs that are really great for catching prey. And then in between his eyes there, he's got what are called piercing sucking mouth parts. So you see there's like the little triangular shape between his eyes. And so what these guys do is they will catch an organism. They will stick that rostrum 
that structure between their eyes, into the flesh of whatever it is they're trying to eat. They shoot in a bunch of digestive enzymes so that the tissue gets dissolved, and then they slurp it back out. And the reason they're called toe biters in some parts of the United States is because they will 100% do that to your toes. Um, so they are usually found kind of on the edges of ponds uh, in kind of, you know, gross, uh, stagnant -y kind of water. Um, and yeah, if you're in there barefoot, you could potentially uh, have one bite into your toes. Um, they're kind of infamous in that they have one of the most painful, um, I wouldn't call it a sting, it's a bite, one of the most painful bites um, that you could get. Uh, I've never experienced it and I don't recommend that you try because um, it is apparently very, very painful. Um, but they are incredibly cool. I actually, I very much love their faces. I think they're adorable. Um, so those are just some aquatic insects. Um, they can be found on Staten Island, as I said. So this guy's from St. George. The other ones I had some, the toad bud came from Tri Kreischerville. Uh, the blue dasher that's in here, which granted you could find anywhere, but that one was from Fort Wadsworth. Um, so yeah, so they can be found here still today, um, including this big scary guy. Uh, thank you for joining me, and I hope to have you guys come by again.